Our next segment will introduce you to the native species of fish across Arizona, from the Apache trout to the round-tailed chub to everything in between. Arizona's unique native fish fauna once called the many types of waterways throughout the state home. Our largest watershed starts at the high elevations of the White Mountains in the eastern part of the state and drains into the Gila Basin in central Arizona. Arizona's only two native trout species, the Apache and Gila, swam in these cold mountain streams. As water worked its way downhill to the bigger, warm water streams and rivers to the west, several species of chubs, suckers, and dace fed on aquatic worms and insects. Along the way, small springs and cienegas contributed to the water course and served as home for top minnows and pupfish. Finally, the water emptied into the mighty Colorado River, where big river fishes like the pike minnow and razorback sucker roamed freely. Historically, 21 species of native fish once resided in the Gila Basin watershed, including the striped mullet, wound fin, and three more species of suckers. Of these, only seven can be called common today. Half of the 21 species are threatened, endangered, or have completely disappeared from Arizona. Millions of years of evolution equipped all these fish with special adaptations allowing them to cope with flash floods, droughts, and other drastic changes in the water conditions of our desert southwest. For example, the noticeable keel atop the razorback sucker helps this fish stay on the river bottom and not waste precious energy fighting swift currents. More amazing, is the two-inch desert pupfish that can withstand water temperature surpassing 110 degrees Fahrenheit and water three times saltier than the ocean, conditions that would kill most fishes many times their size. When settlers arrived in Arizona during the 1800s, they found the indigenous peoples using native fishes like the desert sucker and pike minnow as food. No wonder, the pike minnow can reach six feet in length. But the eastern newcomers thought these resident fish to be too bony for their taste and began importing more familiar eastern and midwestern sports species such as bass, catfish, and sunfish. The native trouts were soon fished down to dangerously low levels and commercially raised rainbow trout were immediately stocked to satisfy the growing demand for sport fish. These introductions did not bode well for our native fish. Competition from the predatory eastern fish and hybridization by non-native trouts began jeopardizing their very existence. In the 1930s, Arizona's growing population needed ever-increasing amounts of water for irrigation and electric power. To meet these needs, a system of dams and reservoirs were constructed to still the raging waters of the mighty Salt and Gila rivers. However, while this new system of water delivery provided badly needed water for humans, it also created some unintended consequences for our native fish. Water releases below the dams transformed the formerly warm and silt-laden rivers of old into cold, clear waters. Dams were now barriers to upstream spawning migrations of chubs, pike minnows, and razorback suckers. Native fishes, which developed over millennia to Arizona's precocious waters, could not adapt to these rapid changes in their watery world. Presently, of Arizona's 35 native fish species, more than half are on the federal endangered species list. Federal agencies such as the Forest Service, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Bureau of Reclamation, as well as Arizona's own State Game and Fish Department are legally charged to not only bring these species back from the brink of extinction, but also to protect existing native populations and their habitats. Why bother? Of what value are these fish if few can be eaten? Answers lie in the practical and aesthetic side of preserving our native fish heritage. 
Long before the exotic mosquito fish was brought to Arizona, the Gila top minnow and desert pupfish were dining on mosquito larvae in the seeps, cienegas, and standing waters throughout the lowlands of the Gila Basin. Top minnow, true to their name, swim near the surface of the water in almost constant exposure to the sun's harmful rays, but with no apparent physical problems. Medical researchers have been interested in these fish, trying to discover the secret of adaptations that allow them to avoid skin cancer. Other native fish also serve as a model to medical research. Because of their unique adaptations to deal with high temperatures and salinity, desert pupfish have been the target of scientists looking for answers to human kidney function and disease. Even more surprising is the razorback sucker, which boasts such a diverse gene makeup that geneticists consider it an ideal candidate in learning more about mapping and identifying human genetic problems. In search of a lifetime catch, anglers have helped with the recovery of the Apache trout in eastern Arizona. Its relative, the Gila trout, is close behind in this recovery process, with new introductions in the Verde and upper Gila drainage. To say that you've caught a trout so unique that it is found in only a dozen streams in eastern Arizona or western New Mexico and nowhere else in the world is an angler's dream. As with all biological entities, our native fish play an important part in the balance of our ecological systems. They are a necessary component to the web of life within a stream, river, or spring. Several of Arizona's other natives, such as the river otter, great blue heron, and other fish-eating birds, are dependent upon fish not only for year-round food, but also for critical food supply at specific times of the year. The spring-nesting southwest bald eagle, for example, has timed its reproductive cycle to coincide with native sucker spawning aggregations in the Salt River. As the state's wildlife agency, the Arizona Game and Fish Department leads the way to native fish recovery and habitat enhancement. Stocking adult fish into historic waters has helped the razorback and pike minnow expand their range in the Verde River. Habitat enhancement for natives not only help the fish concerned, but all forms of wildlife dependent upon aquatic systems. Trees planted to shade the creek from solar radiation also provide riparian bird species with a home. Building fences to protect streams and streamside vegetation from livestock grazing can provide additional forage for elk. By saving our native fishes today, we're making them available to our children tomorrow. You're gonna make a fish? Okay. Through education, Kids now learn about the unique place these fishes hold as part of Arizona's wildlife. The spots help him survive by... They can see firsthand how fish and wildlife depend on aquatic ecosystems. We are all stewards of Arizona's fish and wildlife resources. Our native fish of the Gila Basin provide the diversity that all ecosystems need for a healthy web of life. They are a link to the past but they also serve as our legacy to future generations. Will we prove to be wise stewards of these resources?